Hi everyone, it's Wynn Saldani. Um, I wanted to do a quick update about the uh, current conditions in the cruising fleet and a couple of couple of things about the, the weather. Hopefully you've all watched Chris's uh, uh, weather briefing right now, which is really excellent. Um, what we're looking at here uh, is current observations on the south end of the lake. And um, what's pretty uh, clearly going on, you see out here sort of to the west, we got winds kind of out of the west. You read these these little barbs, that means a five knot wind from the direction it's pointing to. So kind of wind out of the west. And if you look here on the lake, on the west shore of the lake, we got a little bit more of a southeast wind. And on the east shore of the lake, we have a little bit more of a southwest wind. And that suggests that there's a little bit of a lake breeze that's still set on. And um, what that means is that kind of in the middle of the lake here, we're not talking about a heck of a lot uh, um, of wind probably. So if you were to try to sail across the lake, you would probably get kind of a, uh, what we would call a meso high or sort of a dead zone here in the middle of the lake. And um, as such, it's really difficult to get across the lake. So the decision for the sailors right now, um, because what will happen later tonight is as the, um, the land cools off, the water remains warm, and instead of having a lake breeze, which is, as you see, the things flowing on um, onshore, right, from the lake to the land, we're going to have probably land breezes develop and maybe be enhanced a little bit even by some of these westerly winds here. So right along the shore, we'll be talking about west winds over on this west coast of Lake Michigan, and we probably later tonight are going to develop east winds um, on this shore of Lake Michigan. So it's uh, the decision you make as a racer is, hey, do I kind of want to go up here, take the shorter route, right? Right at the, the rum line, we call it the rum line, maybe risk that it's going to be dead in the middle of the lake, or do I want to sort of stick along the shore right here where I'm more likely to pick up this land breeze? And then later on, uh, again, if you've been watching the forecast tomorrow, we might be getting into some late in the day, some good southerly or southeasterly breezes. Do I want to, you know, then I hook into those and maybe this guy who went in the middle of the lake is back here because the wind was lighter and maybe I'm up here because I was in more breeze and I'm way ahead then when the, when the wind comes out of the south or southeast later on in the race. Uh, so that's kind of the tactical decision that the cruising fleet is probably thinking about right now, which is, do I play the shore for a thermal or do I go across the lake and hope I can make it through kind of that dead zone in the middle? And if you take a look at where the cruising fleet is now, uh, let me just zoom out here just a little bit. Uh, so the cruising fleet, again, um, going pretty well, really. I mean, um, I can't, I, I, we've got you know, not a huge spread in the fleet, but some spread in the fleet. Certainly we've got people that are hanging here over to the left, right? Joint Ventures hanging to the left. Certainly Broderi here is a very well sailed boat hanging over to sort of the west side of the fleet. Um, the majority of the fleet, though, seems to be thinking, hey, let me sort of edge towards what we call the rum line. The rum line is this red line here. It's the straight line distance between where you need to go next and, uh, and the start. So we have a lot, lot, lot of boats sitting here on the rum line. A few boats to the right, I would say, in general, we have more to the left and on the rum line than we do to the right of the rum line. And out in front, boat for boat, and this is no surprise, is infinite diversion. Um, so they're going 6.4 knots now. Uh, 19 degrees is about the course to where they're going um, and they uh, you know it's a 63 foot boat so they go pretty quick um, that tells me there's some breeze there's some uh, uh, southeast is what I'm hearing for people who are still sort of tweeting from the uh, from the course some southeast breeze out there in the middle of the lake now if that southeast wind is a component of a very by the way very well developed kind of lake breeze here when the temperature dies I'm sorry when the temperature cools off over land that lake breeze is gonna die it, um, and that's, I think, you know, something we're going to see as the night wears on, whether infinite aversion and the people in the middle of the lake sort of stall out or whether they sort of just, you know, they, they uh, really keep it moving and sort of by, by this time tomorrow, um, maybe they're, um, let me just move the, the map a little bit. Maybe they're up by like, you know, way up here by uh, getting across to Point Betsy or somewhere uh, close to the Michigan shore here, um, which is sort of the next place that they're going right now over here on the Michigan shore and Little Sable and Big Sable points. So it's um, it will be interesting to see whether they stay in pressure uh, overnight or whether uh, the idea of staying near a shore where you get the thermal breezes is what you, you want to do. So um, uh, just uh, we can look at the sections real quick, right? Cruising one. Uh, those are the faster boats, uh, are a little bit farther along right now, and the boat with the little crown on it, sort of the virtual leader. Uh, let's just zoom in on that. I'm just clicking here to zoom in. Right, orange boat, and that is uh, Perico. 
with Ryan Johnson. That is a uh, Sabre 4402. Beautiful boat. Beautiful, beautiful boat. Uh, cruising 2. Uh, over here, they're a little bit more to the left of the ley line, right? Or the rum line, excuse me. And we have a boat to the left of the rum line that might, I don't know. Again, could they be more pressure? I don't know. Uh, Vino is a uh, Geno 40. So they're um, in the virtual lead in that section, um, although there's a lot of racing left, right? And then in cruising three, um, these are some of the smaller, slower boats. The virtual leader on this one is Obsession and Endeavor 42. And you notice that this boat here, Cuddy's Ark, is actually ahead in real time of uh, Obsession. And part of the reason for that is that we race on handicap systems, which if you have any questions about, just drop me a line on Facebook and I, I, will, I will try to explain. Um, uh, again, I hope you all took a look at Chris's forecast. Uh, I've got one, just one point that I want to sort of educate on in Chris's forecast and repeat a little bit. This time tomorrow night, we're probably looking at some thunderstorms. Um, we'll be watching them together closely. And what I want people to understand is the way that wind works around a thunderstorm. Um, and this model just shows it great, right? So Chris talked about this, but you see the wind is out of the south here. And then all of a sudden, there's sort of this kind of a, it's a gust front or outflow boundary we call in a meteorology. What's kind of is happening is that the, the rainfall is sort of splashing down in here, right? So the, it's oversimplified, right? There's a, a net downdraft uh, for a number of reasons, evaporative cooling, friction from the raindrops and stuff like that. And what, what that's causing to happen is that once that hits, hits the ground, right, the big splash of air and water hits the ground, it's got to go out. Um, it's got to go somewhere. It can't go through the ground and it goes out is what it does. So it enhances winds if you look at the way these wind barbs are pointing right outwards back here behind it what's happening and even you see this even more in the south is it will cancel so the wind is trying to come out from the south down here just like it is over the lake but what's happening right here is that the two winds are canceling each other out and you end up with see this is a zone of really really light winds right and we have no barbs we're kind of under five knots right and we have one barb like this that's 10 knots this is 15 knots, this is 20 knots, just to give you an idea, that's how we read these things, by the little bars on them. And there's almost nothing down here in this area as the outflow from the storm is canceling what we call the gradient wind, which is the big picture wind here. So uh, as a racer um, and sailor, as the storms develop tomorrow night, you know, obviously you want to stay safe and stay away from severe weather, but understanding that the wind is going to kind of be coming out from the storm or be a net of the out from the storm and the wind that exists currently is a, um, a pretty important concept to understand in your sail choice and your positioning and so forth. So that is going to be a big deal tomorrow night because uh, this time tomorrow night, you know, we start our cruising fleet around noon. Uh, sorry, hang on a second there. I don't know why I'm spell checking. Uh, so we start our fleet around, oh boy around noon and in fact a lot of the fleet really kind of you know after 12 hours or so might be in this neighborhood right here now as chris said this model likely doesn't uh, almost certainly is not exactly where the storm is going to be but you know if you see thunderstorms down here and you're in this area what do you, you know what do you do well the wind's going to be coming out from them right and so what does that mean to you as a racer is a decision that you're going to have to make or if the storm's up here, what does it mean? What does that mean for your sail selection? What does that mean for your course, for your strategy? What do you do in that situation? So safety is number one, uh, but understanding this concept of how the winds works is something else that I think the, the racers are probably going to be thinking about a lot tomorrow night as we, uh, as we get through the race. Okay, I've talked for long enough, and um, uh, please uh, feel free to ask any questions on Facebook. Uh, post this on Twitter. Um, I'll be up for a couple more hours tonight. And tomorrow I'll be with you guys and do a couple of updates in the morning before the start and then updates as the racing goes on in the afternoon and evening tomorrow. And uh, thanks all for following the race and talk to you soon.